presentation is web form for everyone. Uh, my name is Jacob Rockwitz. I'm known as Jay Rockwitz on the web. I'm a Drupal developer and software architect. I built and maintained the web form module for Drupal 8. And got to start off every web form presentation with what is the web form module? Well, the definition I like to give is, you know, the web form module is a powerful, flexible, open source form builder and submission manager for Drupal 8. And I'll get into it a little bit more, but for this presentation, I, I've kind of decided to do something different to be, I don't have a specific target audience. I'm trying to kind of walk through the use cases of the web form module and get site owners to understand where they might want to use it on their site, site builders to understand how to build forms with it, build awesome forms, and developers to kind of get them to understand what's, what you can do with it under the hood. What are the real possibilities when someone says, can you do this or can't you do this, which I like to say you can do anything. Um, and my goal with being at these conferences and doing these sessions is to answer your questions. So at the end I'll be open up to questions. I'm here all day. You should ask me questions. You can always ask me questions on the Drupal Slack channel. And I've also decided to make things interesting to myself. I like to show you my favorite things because there's a lot going on in the Web4 module. So when I call out features, they're usually things that I'm very excited about. And there's tons of opportunities for you to explore and find things that you enjoy. Um, for site owners, it's really about the use case. Why should you use the web form module? And, you know, the web form module allows you to build any type of form or application on your site. And the use case is that you would, you know, build a form or copy a template, publish that form on the site as a page note or block, collect form submissions. When they, someone hits submit, you'll send confirmation emails and notifications. And you want to review those results online and ultimately, you're going to want to distribute that data somehow, which usually the download the CSV, you can remote post that data to a third-party server. And it really boils down to these two steps. That you're building a form, you're collecting data, and then you're distributing it. And I like doing a little demo that I've been doing for years. It's a pretty simple one. It's a clean install of the web form module. Out of the box, the only form that's installed is the contact form, which I'll show you. And people are very familiar with this, this form. It's got your name, email, subject. What I like to do is just say, let's add a company field to this so we can walk through building, you know, the, the builder, which is right here. And to add a company, you just click add element, click text field. I'm going to call it company. And the web module ships with reasonable defaults. There's lots of options. I'll get into some of them. We don't have to do anything other than enter a title. Hit save. Get to add it to the bottom. We could view it. And I made a little mistake here where it should say your company, it should be up toward the top under your name and required. And go back to the builder. And of course you can do this in the UI, drag something up, set it required and edit it. But what I like to do is show the source mode, which is, this is the source code behind the form. And what's great about this moment is I can show you how powerful it is by just saying you can cut and paste elements, move it up under name, paste it in, change the label, um, let's see. and I want to make it required, I can cut and paste the property from somewhere else, put it in, hit save, and then I can view the change, and instead of viewing it, I'm going to go to the test tab, and we're going to kind of start switching gears here, and the test tab will automatically populate the form with dummy data, making it very easy, if you have really complex forms, this tab is amazing for that, because you can fill out 100 inputs in one click, and I hit send, and it's just going to display a very simple notification message at the top. And we've done the building of the form, and now we've just collected a submission. So we're going to go to that second part of the use case and go over to results. And if you review the results, I'm going to click through, and you can see the single submission. Something I'm even going to promote in a second is you can even download that submission to PDF and you know distribute this. And we've reviewed those results. And then finally, we want to get them out of Drupal in the web form module. And the simplest, most common way is to download it as a CSV. Instead of downloading it as a CSV, I'm going to just generate an HTML table, which can be opened in Excel. That's why this feature is here. It gives you the possibility of designing HTML tables that just look very pretty in Excel. I'm not going to change anything that's going to happen here, except that instead of downloading it, I'm going to say show it online. And we get this nice HTML table that would open up in, in Google Doc, uh, Google Sheets, or Excel and look this way. You could even change the look and feel if you wanted to. Um, I'm going to go back to the main page so that I can continue forward. So that YAML source mode 
is awesome. It is really powerful, um, especially on complex forms. You can go in and look at all the labels and change all the labels at once and adjust them and tweak them. Um, you can copy one section of a form to another. It can save a lot of time. And with that table that I showed you, I kind of want to point out, and this shows you kind of how the logic I have, or the feeling I have behind web form modulators. You can customize that table. There's a very simple UI. You click, you get a form, you check off the columns you want, you pick the sorting. That's like views light. It's just a quick way for most non-technical people to adjust how the results are displayed. But you can even go in and video showing it. We can just replace that whole table with a view, and that's Drupal's way of letting you build anything, any type of representation you want to show your information. And that PDF submission generator is not just to, I gotta throw out, like this is just, yes, you can see a PDF, but then tied to this is, you can attach the PDF to an email, and you can even take all your submissions and export them as PDF documents to archive them. So you can have a spreadsheet, but then you can also have a perfect snapshot of that data. And to get more into to some of the features included in the Webform module, there's, you know, this is the best way to put it. The Webform module provides all the features expected from enterprise proprietary form builder combined with the flexibility and openness of Drupal. There's a lot of functionality out of the box, and there's a lot of functionality being built in the Drupal community, and you can add your own custom functionality to it. And I'm not going to go through this entire list, but it's just calling out some really important features that need. Conditional logic might be one that everyone expects. I think it's kind of fun to go to the last one, confirmation messages, which very few people would expect me to be like, I'm really proud of them. But um, we're going back to the simple form. And yeah, it just shows a message at the top. But if you wanted to customize that message, you can go into settings and go over to the confirmation page. And every possible type of confirmation message or display you'd want to do is available. I like the modal dialog use case because modal dialogs don't take people away from the page they're on. And I'll just show you, you hit submit, and it just pops a little modal, keeps them on the same form so they could just close it, escape, and come back to it. Um, and then you get into elements, these inputs on the page, and there are over 80 different elements available um, from signature elements to you know, rating elements, and then you can even enhance each individual element. And it's kind of better just to show you this and say there's a style guide. There's a Webform Examples module which just shows you a kitchen sink of everything. I almost could use the pointer here where you're walking through and every element's available, which we're going to get down to more complex ones. You can have cute kittens, which I always like to call out. And there's a signature element that creates a PNG that you can submit to the server. And if you keep scrolling, you get Terms of Service, Likert, and finally, at the bottom, you start getting some style elements. And this is um, a multiple composite element, so you can have multiple inputs working together. I'll spend a second on that in a minute. What I like to do is then zoom in and just show you the nuances that you have with the Webform module. This is a simple text field, and I've enabled every type of title, description, and placeholder that you could have on it. And I don't recommend doing this on your forms. It this is designed so that, depending on the use case of your form, you should display the descriptions in different ways. The way I would just start guiding people is generally stick to a simple description and placeholder, but if you want to have a compact form, that help tooltip is really useful because you can just stick that description up there. And I use the more, I do a lot of medical forms, and sometimes you need to put a full definition, like two paragraphs in below an input, and you can say, get more information, and people just slide it up. So, I put this in the middle because I don't like leaving it to the end. And I think for site owners to end with, there's a lot of channels for support. And there's good documentation available online. There's a lot of screencasts. There's a community, there's two kind of communities happening on Drupal Stack Exchange. People are asking questions and getting answers. And in the web form issue queue, if you find a bug, it's usually resolved fairly quickly. And I really got to emphasize that there's videos for every single feature. That's why I'm not going through every feature listed here. But there's 48 videos, and I'm showing you right now how to do advanced views integration in a video. And there's, you know, the slides are available, and then there's links off to related articles. And my goal with all this information is to inspire people to build awesome web forms. And that gets into site builders. So how do you build awesome forms? Well, I started hinting there's lots of examples. So you need to learn from the examples. There's, I think there's five or six example modules where you can turn them on and get kind of an idea of how something's meant to work. If it's a complex concept, 
there's an example for it. And there's, there are also templates and demos. And when I say examples, I, you know, you saw the style guide. With that examples module, you'll get an example of a multi-step form, multi-column layout, advanced elements, computed and composites. And computed and composites, I kind of wanted to find because they're not unique, but you know, the computed element just allows you to do calculations using Twig on the server side. So I'm just doing a math calculation right now and adding two numbers together. And I'm going to click through and show you the back end of it. <coughs> All it is is a little tweak snippet here where you're just adding a couple of numbers together and checking off a box and say do it dynamically on the client side. Um, it's very powerful to do totals and tallies. It's all done server side, which has a plus and minus. There's a little performance hit there, so don't go crazy. Um, I kind of recommend sticking to one or two computed elements per page if you're going to have them refreshing constantly. Um, and the demo of the other one is going to go through and scroll down. You can pick a user and then pull their data. So I have an entity reference that then is pulling individual user data into just using tokens, which is a little easier than Twig. Um, composite elements are just multiple elements working together, like a date or a name field. And you can kind of collect user information. And you can build your own custom composites. You can do it in the UI. You can even do it in code if you want to get into an advanced use case. And this is a really complex one. You can build your own custom complete elements and describe the HTML markup that you want using Twig and then put some CSS on top of it. And I'll go over and show you the preview and you're just getting buttons. Nice simple buttons, but it opens up any type of display you want to have to collect data. And this is getting really advanced where you'll see there's no HTML. It's pointing to an SVG file, which is HTML markup with a couple of IDs. And you go to you and you get a clickable map of the United States um, with panning, zooming. Um, people are using this to do like hope event registrations where people need to pick their boots. I use it for medical diagrams. And there's a big takeaway for this, and this is a tricky one to point out, but the Web4 module in Drupal is one of the most accessible form builders and content management applications on the market. Drupal cares a lot about accessibility and out of the box, Drupal's charges to ship with AA compliance and the Webform module does too. And that custom composite element is completely accessible. So you're creating markup and then a layer of JavaScript comes in on top of it and handles all the keyboard accessibility, the area attributes and makes sure that people with screen readers can use that markup. Um, moving on to get to more, you know, not just elements, but like use cases, there's a templates module which gives you a starting point where you can copy them. The UI kind of shows you, you go to a templates tab and you can look at these previews. You can delete these forms or create your own. You can preview it, see if you like it, and then you can select it. In this demo, I'm kind of just showing the meta medical, the, the web request a medical appointment form because I just like this form because I work in healthcare. And you can go select it, make a copy, and you have your own instance of this form that you can then go customize. And I also want to emphasize, besides customize, you can just look at how it's set up, how the conditional logic's working. You know, um, there is a custom composite at the bottom that I was working <coughs> on to kind of collect phone numbers, because that's kind of an interesting challenge to get people to call back at different times. And once you start understanding these templates, it, it comes down to what are some of the most complex use cases. It's what can you build using a webform module. And you can get into, you know, like app, full application systems, taking in college applications, having people evaluating event registrations. You can even, people are starting to do some commerce stuff and collecting donations in a simple way. And a lot of times it's a very simple use case. I just have a form, I want someone to fill out and give me some money. Event registration is a good one. And you don't always need a full commerce solution. Um, and there's two demos. There, and I'll describe the first one and demo the second one. The application evaluation demo, think of it this way. You have a form, you have someone who's applying, they fill out the form, they hit submit. You get the data. Then you need people to evaluate that submission and what you have is another form attached to that submission that people evaluate and give a review and a score. And it will actually calculate a total for the score and it allows you kind of to evaluate applicants. The event registration demo, is basically you have events on your site and you're tracking registered for it. And I like doing a demo because I, one thing I do with these demos is I kind of add in little advanced pieces of web form functionality. Does this give people an idea that these exist and how to use them? And for the demo, I'm really just going to show you 
the front end. What, what, what's going on when someone comes in? And it's a very simple list of three events. There's a register button. I'm going to actually go to the individual event to kind of just show you. But the register button on the main page works the same here. And you can set limits, submission limits to an event. So only four people can register for it. And that's set on the individual event. And you can click register. And this is actually opening the modal dialog. There's a modal API, so you can open forms on your site modals. I recommend this pattern a lot. Um, there's two benefits. One, you're not cluttering the page up. And this deals with a caching issue. If you stick a form on every page of your site, it kind of breaks caching a little bit because then people are submitting it there. When you do it this way, there's no caching issue. They click, I want to register, and suddenly they get this form opening up. It's a separate, issue, you know, separate callback. No performance issue. And it's fully accessible. And I'm going to go and fill it out and see if I can get my information in. And this is another advanced feature that was added recently. And it's a, so we have submission limits on the event. Only four people can register. But we can also set option limits and say we only have a limited number of t-shirts available. So I can say I want an extra large t-shirt. And you can think of it as slots for a room, any type of limits. You see it got tracked there. I'm going to click back. And I'm going to go over here and show you the results. So we got one result for this form. And then if I go over this options tab, it's going to show you the inventory of as people are going through it. And something that's hard to show, but I'll try to explain it really well, is this form, you have a, let's go back to the main page. I can register all three of these events. It's the same form over and over again, applied to different event nodes. And each event node tracks its own submissions. So it's a lot, of, it's a great case of reuse. You can build one form and reuse it across your site. And you even, there's ways to tweak that form as it's being used throughout the site. The example would be, is we're tweaking the number of registrants on the same form over and over again, because we're passing in a submission limit. What happens when the counter goes to zero? On the, uh, um, it sure? displays a message. Oh, oh. That should be fine. Um, you got me. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. I think that's fine. Um, yeah, it displays a message, and you have control over the message. Um, it's tricky. It depends on where you're putting the form, by the way. It's a very tricky scenario. Like, I, in this case, with the button, I think the button goes away and you get a message. So you don't have an awkward thing where someone clicks register and you say, you can't register. Um, you have, uh, yeah, it's off the top of my head. I don't have an immediate list. Of the, the, but I take care of those cases. You can always customize it. That's an, by the way, that's like the answer in Drupal. <laughs> Um, I'm going to keep going, and we're pretty good on time, so I'm going to. So I don't mind questions during the middle. Um, how do you extend the web form module? So yeah, kind of. There's, there's a lot of add-ons available. Where you know, it's, I think it's hitting 140 different integrations, and in this, you know, video I'm just showing for spam. There's no out of the spam. When you install the web form module, it doesn't take care of spam. But there are four great options to install, and they have full integration. I do recommend Honeypot. That seems to work really well. I also use Capture a lot. Um, some of the integrations also just get into third-party systems where you can feed data into CRMs. At this point, I think someone's written some integration to every CRM that I know about, you know, like Salesforce, HubSpot, where you can just push that data into there. And I'll, I'll kind of get into that with extending. Which capture, uh, what? Which capture are you Recapture. You know. Well, I mean, it's part of the, like, some of the just recapture 2.0. I like I, the 2.0, and it seems to be fine. Honeypot does a good, and I only put it on forms that Honeypot fails, okay. where just like you're getting spam and you just don't want to deal with it. But Honeypot seems to capture a lot of it. And Clean Talk is one that I, I have them all listed in Clean Talk. I haven't used because you have to pay, but that's also that's like what Molum, where they analyze the text coming in, and they are a little smarter about it. Um, okay. So let's talk about extending the web form module. So we're really jumping into developers. Um, it's, it comes down to like, what can we really do with the web form module? Well, every aspect of the web form module is customizable and extendable using plugins and hooks. And for non-technical people, plugins are just small pieces of functionality that are swappable. And they are reusable, standardized, and extendable. And these are the three primary plugins available. We started walking through things so it's easy for you to start to understand. 
You know, element <coughs> that gets displayed on a form, and uh, it's, I'm starting to give you a hint that the in the web form module there are just wrappers around Drupal's default form elements. Drupal has a form API, and I'll talk about it for a little bit. And handlers are when an email goes out, that's a handler. It handles a submission. So when someone hits submit. There's these plugins that, I mean, the handlers can do anything. There's this one plugin that you put on your form and you can capture any behavior that's happening, whether someone's hitting submit, there's a validation, they're saving, they're updating. You can even alter the form dynamically from a handler. So it opens up, it's basically a way to hook it to everything that's going on with your web form. Um, Email is the most common one. And exporters, I showed you the you know downloading of the submission data, and you can create your own custom exporters. Some the bulk export of all the PDF documents is an exporter plugin, and it's a really simple one because it's just looping through submissions and saying, "Hey, give me back the PDF for each submission," and put it in a zip archive. Um, and this is the only code I'm showing on screen, and I just thought it's helpful to be like, so there is an example module for building custom composite elements. When I say custom composites, a bunch of inputs working together. And this is pretty much the baseline code for this plugin, where you're just you plug, you're saying the info, which is all inherited, because it basically looks at this array and says, well, you're collecting two form elements. It's a text field, first name and last name. And there's a little theme layer where you can kind of customize the look and feel of those inputs working together. And this gives you a lot of flexibility. If you want reuse in an organization, this is the best way to go. But you can create one instance, the best example would be, uh, you have a lot of user profiles on your site, you can create a reusable user profile composite that then you can insert all over the site. And it's standardized, collects the same data, it's identical, you don't get crazy field names, everyone uses the same name, and it's easy to manage, it's easy to track. And with handlers, I hinted about the email, and there's two other, there's three other handlers worth talking about. Um, actions and settings are kind of like rules. Like the rules module allows you to do act on an action in Drupal. And actions and settings allow, allow you to kind of tweak a form. The example of a settings handler would be you want a custom conditional confirmation message based on something someone fills out in a form. So if they enter a certain value, you want to send, display a different message or redirect to a different URL. Um, actions allow you to conditionally tweak a submission. The best example, someone enters a flag on a submission and says this is important and you can flag a submission as being important because it supports storing. Uh, very useful if you come up with some scenario that you need to address, you should look at both those plugins. And the one that surprised me the most was the remote post plugin because I didn't initially anticipate how much people would want to get their data out of Drupal. I think that's just like a huge shift that's happened in the last you know, four or five years where if you want to do data right, you don't, it's not that you don't do it in Drupal, is you want to get it to Salesforce or CRM and that's where you get a lot of success. So the remote post allows you to just push data to a remote server and I'm going to give you a demo of it. And the debug one I want to call out because if you're writing code and you'll see that in the handlers I create always try to think about how you can debug issues because you can run, you can run in, all of these have issues. Email, sending email, you can have problems with it just not looking correct. And the debug handler in the web form module will just show you the data that you're dealing with as it's going through the steps. In a multi-step form, you'll see the data that's coming back to the server. And in the demo of the remote post, okay, so we're on the simple contact form. I'm in the handler section. I'm adding a remote post. And all this is you're setting a URL. Um, I'm going to use this URL that's the example of my CRM. Scroll down and just, I'm just showing you that by default, it's just the elements you've created get sent to the server, but you can send the metadata. You can tweak that remote post, but very important when you do a new handler, turn on debugging, because it's going to break. Um, and you're going to go and I'm going to hit send. I'm getting an error because that CRM doesn't exist. Just made it up. But what's good here is you get to see the data. That's the data going back, and there's the error. And this allows you to push data anywhere you want, any place, anyhow, just own packets, XML. And really, if this doesn't address your use case, that's why Drupal's so beautiful. Is you can extend or copy this snippet of code and tweak it your own way. Um, an example that I can't deal with is authentication layers. That gets really crazy to predict what how someone implemented OAuth. And usually people will extend this and put their OAuth authentication on top of it. 
Um, there are these advanced settings where you can kind of pass some parameters. And yeah, this results page, this, this is another example. These are good plugins if you need really custom exports. If you need XML package or you need to go somewhere with it, you can you know, adjust it. Um, and we can't forget hooks. Hooks are functions that define the multiple behaviors. And hooks are just really simple snippets of code. And I'm calling out just a few of them. A couple of more have been added. And just shows you that any aspect of form can be tweaked. From the form to even how the data is being handled. I used to call out this hook a lot. But this, this hook allows you to anything that's happening, you can get in the middle of. Like, as an email is about to be sent out, this hook is called just to say, do you want to tweak the email? And I mean, this is on every form everywhere. That's really the power of hooks, by the way. People, people keep saying, oh, plug into the way to go. But you can put a hook that captures everything going on, and you can kind of adjust things. Um, so I'm, getting, I'm wrapping up, and I'm getting to the most important concept to understand about web forms. And I recently kind of added this and realized this is really important. Because I think people are missing this opportunity. Um, the web form module extends Drupal's form. <coughs> so Drupal has an API to build forms. And the web form module, all this fancy stuff you're seeing, most of it's simple form API and a wrapper around form API to do an enhancement. And you know, just to get people familiar with form API, it's a, it's a pretty simple scenario. It's your, you have a form that you build, you validate the data, and you submit the data. And when I started doing this, I kind of wanted to explore some developer tools, kind of the last demo, I'll, I'll come back to Form API at the end. And what I want to show you is just a little understanding of the APIs around the Web Form module. Scheme is an interesting one because I gave you a hint that the, you're remote posting a ton of data, you're sending someone a packet, and then how to export a Web Form. For the API stuff, it's pretty easy. Let me click back a few times. Eh, I'll go this way. So there's a web form develop module that you turn on to open up these features. And we'll stick to now to the contact form. I have one submission which helps, but go over to the build. The test tab has this subtask. So this is a test form, but I can go over to the API, API tab. And what it's showing you is how in code to import data using PHP. So this is just a YAML packet, and this is the packet that you'd have to create to submit data. And this is actual PHP code to, you could copy and paste this into any one of your applications if you're doing a bulk import. And I think it's important when I emphasize the validate and build, you see validate, build, validate, and submit, you see these patterns. Here you're, you're validating your data and you're submitting it. And if you get errors, you can go on. Um, there are other utilities to import data. There's a dedicated import module which allow you to take a spreadsheet and pull that in if you need to. Um, now I showed you that remote post and this is, a really important one. I want to get there correctly. So here's the thing. You're sending this huge packet of data to someone. If you're integrating in CRM, you want to tell them what that data is going to look like. And this tab under develop, called web form, maybe it should be called schema, gives you the exact data type, the data that's being sent, and tells them how large the field size are. And I thought in this demo, and I did not research this. I thought this threw me off for a second, like I made a mistake. but. I think there's some deliberate reason why we went with 254 for email. I think it's part of the specification. Um, but it gives people exactly what data is. If you had a much more complex form, this <coughs> options would show you all the possible options that are going to be sent in that remote post packet. And you can export it as a spreadsheet. This saves my ass so much. Sorry at first. But I'm dealing with you know, some third party, and I'm like, i got to send you this data, and it's massive. And you're like, what's going on? You hit export and you give them this spreadsheet and that's the end of the discussion. You've just told, you gave them a specification of the data they need. Now with Form API, something happened recently on Stack Exchange where people are asking, can I reuse web form modules to build custom forms in Drupal? Because sometimes you're building a configuration form or you have a one-off form or, or you, a lot of times we're going to go customize the node edit form to improve the user experience. I think one very specific question was, on the node edit form I'd like to use a word counter and I don't want to go install another word counter module when there's one available in the web form module. And one of my favorite things is APIs are reusable in the web form module. I spent a lot of time on it. And this is a new demo that I'm doing, so you've got to bear with me. Um, I'll start here, and I'm going to jump to a better example. So we're still in the contact form. I just like using it because people understand what's going on with this form. 
With X Web Form, first part, this is Drupal 101. We're not getting to anything special here. It's the fact that the Web Form module uses configuration, which means you can export an entire form as a simple YAML file and move it from one server to another. And I'll just scroll and give you a peek of it. There's your inputs and all your properties. And even at the bottom, you'll see you know access controls, which I just didn't get into. But you go and you can hit export, download it, move it from one server to another. I sometimes will do this and <coughs> import the changes, or I'll do it on a dev. It's a good pattern. I'll do this on a dev server, like export, and then I'll import it onto production if I really mm -hmm. have to. Um, but the new feature, which I'm going to I'm going to show it to you here, and then I'm going to go to a much better example. There's an export feature to basically take your web form and convert it to form API. Since I'm using form API to build a web form, I was like, why not then allow web forms to be brought back into form API? Why? Because then you get all the enhancements of web form applied to your normal Drupal PHP forms. The example, and by the way, the way I thought of doing this is you're basically taking this form and building a little module, and the module has four files, and what's good is this is good Drupal 101 for, I also love the idea of transitioning people from using Drupal as a site builder to starting to write some code. And this just gives you an example of a module where you're describing the module, you're setting one URL, you are then going in and building a form. By the way, what we just talked about with forms, this is form API, where I'm setting some dependencies. And by the way, the dependencies are two things from the web form module, and actually only one of them is 100% required. And Remember I showed you that YAML source? That's the same code converted to PHP. And a little note for people, all I'm doing is giving you an example of a simple configuration form in Drupal. When I say configuration form, that's like, when you go and change your site settings and you say I want to set the uh, default email address, the SAG line of the site, that's a configuration form. It's a very simple form. And then you scroll down and all I'm doing is applying two methods. This one is just a critical one. What this does is it takes your simple form and if you specify web form submit specific properties, it enhances, it triggers them, it applies the custom logic. So if you want to have little help with this, you can say, and I'm going to have to jump to the next one to show it to you. The end of this is just, uh, I'm just showing you some default behaviors. By the way, you're not going to get 100% of the web form functionality in this. You, I'm not building multi-step forms in form API. That's a web, very web form specific feature. So these are little enhancements. One that I think everyone would appreciate is you can warn users about unsaved changes with two lines of code. And that means if someone's on a node edit form and they start typing and then they exit, it'll prop, pop up the box until you're about to lose your data. Um, the better demo which starts to show you the power here, is I'm going to go to this custom form. So there's a dedicated custom form module that um, I'm going to turn it on because I got burned by that. Sorry about that. Custom. It's worth doing two seconds to web form example, custom form example. Turn it on. It's here. See, I just added this week, so I didn't update my local dev environment to turn it on by default. Now if I go to custom, the goal here is I want to show you all the features available in the web format. So you're starting to see your own kitchen sink of this, the style guide where we can set text limits. And I'll go down. You can even get cute kittens. I see this use case great for if you had a theme and you wanted to show people different logos that they could select. And this is a very powerful feature that's not available in core. It's basically dismissible messaging, um, where you can put on a node edit form, a little message at the top that might tell someone something, and then they can click the X and close it. And you have full control over the four scenarios that you have for closing a message, because sometimes you want to close it for the browser session, you want to close it just for the user, close it for just the site, or you can just, they can close it and they'll come back when they revisit the page. You also get the ability to do flexbox layouts, which is just multi-com. And then at the bottom, I'm showing some really advanced elements, because you can do really, this, this widget you're seeing at the bottom of multiple inputs working together is completely reusable. So on a really complex configuration site where you might have to collect that information, it's really simple markup. And the best way to show that to you is click export, go over to form API. So once again, the module info, the routing. Now we get to this very long configuration form, but I wanted to show you that thing at the bottom. So I'm scrolling fast. 
because I want to show you the multiple composite element because this is where it gets interesting. By the way, I call this internal because these, some of these are internal elements. There's a dedicated mapping element to map source data to destination data. And you can see where it gets, it's not a lot of code. The multiple, when we're doing first and last name, we're looking at not even 20 lines of code to create that rich user experience. And you can customize every aspect of that multiple composite. You could say you want plus and minus on the right side or you don't want it. You want people to have add more at the bottom or not. And once again at the bottom, it's just initializing it. That was a lot to demo. Oh, and then there's dummy data to get started with your configuration. But I just added this, so I'm going to keep exploring this topic because it just opens up a lot of possible. I actually might start using Webform more, one of my custom code on my sites. Um, could it keep going? How are we on time? Oh, we're great. Um, yeah, you know, it originally started out as just this slide, and I had to build that demo to kind of get people to fully understand it. But you can navigate through Drupal.org and look at the Webform modules code. A lot of stuff is reusable. So right now I'm just navigating to the multiple element and just showing the back end code. Um, the next piece of code that I'm going to show just points out there's also a lot of utility. So the Webform module is fairly complex, but there's a whole series of utility classes to just help with arrays or form. I mean, one of the most powerful um, utilities is there's a, a flat enough form utility where basically you can pass it this complex nested data of, of a form array and it will just flatten to a single flat array and then you just loop through it and find the data you want. It makes a huge, it's a huge time saver. Um, so yeah, I got into something complex, so it's a good moment to be like, you want to use the Web4 module and get, it's worth getting involved in the Drupal community. I think it's important to always say that at the end of these presentations and bring up ways to get involved and hopefully inspire you. you know, there's always need in, in the Drupal community and the Web4 module for support, documentation, translations. I do nothing with translations. It's kind of nice to see all these other people <coughs> stepping in and providing that. Um, testing. Marketing. I added, by the way, when I got this list from people.org, I'm not sure events was listed on it, but I'm not going to include events because we're here at this event and people put a lot of time into organizing it. Um, with the Webform module, I like to call out, you know, report or fix a bug, request or build a feature, you know, edit documentation, spread the word, tell your story. I always appreciate hearing case stories. And you can sponsor and contribute a feature. I do do that. Um, that great map of the United States that was all clickable was completely sponsored by someone who needed that functionality. It took me like two years to finally get that. Like multiple people said, I want this. We spec'd it out, and finally someone's like, okay, I like that, I'll pay for it, and it worked out really well. Um, and in the Webform module, something that the Drupal community is exploring is open collective. I have a little definition here, and I'll keep it simple. It's, it's just a place for people to collect funds to help support open source projects. And it's trackable, the funds you get a receipt at the end. Um, it helps you can become a backer of the Webform module. Um, and finally, yeah, you know, I'll plug, plug myself to say, yes, I do training support. I think sponsored feature is the most common thing in the Webform module. If you need something and you're struggling with it, it's worth reaching out. <laughs> At the very least, we'll sit down and scope out the issue. And I've done that and not gotten paid. And then somewhere down the line, someone steps in and it's like, I'll do that feature. And they just do it because they have it. It's written out in the issue queue. Uh, you can learn more about me on uh, jrockwitz.com or on drupal.org, jrockwitz. I think I'm good because you can ask some questions. you got seven minutes for questions. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to repeat the question, so I'm going to... Okay, let's go. I have a question that we need to touch on two angles. Okay. So, my use case is... I want users to be able to sign up for a time delimited account, mm -hmm. say 30 days. So they create an account, and I want to do an action mm -hmm. that sets some kind of timer on the back end. And then I'm interested in knowing if I can modify the built in user profile form to display how much time is left before your account expires. <coughs> that's very specific. On the user profile, that's just custom code. On the timer, um, there's no APIs immediately available, but there's this thing I didn't touch upon. Uh, by the way, on that event demo, I left it out, but there's a scheduled email handler, and what it does is uh, someone registers for an event, and then you could send them, you could schedule a date in the future to send them a, you know, a reminder a day before. 
Um, that doesn't solve your use case, but the code there solves the challenge and problem of timing things, which is, was not <coughs> trivial to do, because you have to basically have a queue, cron task, you're tracking it. You want to also, you want to make sure it works. Um, you are kind of stuck with custom code. I'm trying to think if the rules module has some time. It's a, it's a big challenge. When I wrote that code, it's a real challenge, because you have to have a queue. Because you have to build out a system to track all those dates and make sure they're triggered and validated. I'm not answering the question perfectly. You're kind of in the custom code realm. I have seen people talk about schedules. There's different scheduling systems um, that might address it. Yep, right behind you. I have a question about workflow um, mm -hmm. with regards to submissions, not the forms themselves. Yep. So I know in, in Drupal 7, working with a client that was using web form workflow to moderate submissions, you know, yeah. basic, basic workflow. So for Drupal 8, is there something similar in the works, or do you have a recommendation for how you would handle kind of review and approval statuses for a submission? Yeah, um, with workflow, someone's asking. Um, some, someone has reached out to me to do some work on it, and um, part of the scope is going to be documenting what's currently going on. And I write a blog post about it. Um, there, I, I'm pretty sure it's going to kind of break down to three or four different variants of workflow. Um, Webform supports very simple flagging, so you can flag or lock a submission, and that's a, that got added because people had that very simple use case. Something comes in, it gets reviewed, you click flag. You finalize it and you lock it. Um, those states can be controlled with conditional logic. So the most simple scenario is you can add administrative fields to a web form. So you have a web form, someone comes in, and you set out, you have great access controls over a drop down that says the state of this document is approved, reviewed, denied, and that's only visible to certain users. You can control exactly who sees it, and you pull down that menu, and then you trigger different behaviors, including sending out emails. Um, that's the simplest one. There is an is someone had created in the queue, because so getting a little technical, web forms are config entities where there's a lot of certain limitation there, but submissions are content entities, meaning they're full-blown working things in Drupal. They're not nodes. There's a, someone has enabled workflow for web form submissions. It's a field, there's a workflow field, and that opens up all of Drupal's workflow tools. And then you can do some moderation. And the third one, which I'll plug, and it's listed on the add-ons page, and this is like, if you need to build crazy workflow, there's a tool called Maestro in the community, and they built a web form handler plugin, and they, the only way to describe it is, uh, they'll build out the most complex flowchart you've ever seen for workflow, and sometimes you need it, and they get it fully working. Um, and I think there'll be some more better integration. I've got to figure out some out of the box, like turn on this module, and suddenly you have Drupal's workflow layered on top of it. Can you have submissions come in flagged by default? Yeah, that's, that's the actions and settings. Yeah. That's where you can put some conditional logic and, and get, get it to work that way. Thank you. Um, oh, I'm sorry, what's the add that you just mentioned? Like? Maestro. Maestro. But it's very important when I talk about anything in the web, that's why I built that add-ons page. You could search for workflow in the add-ons page and that's going to come up. That might be the only add-on um, add to the webflow module that's workflow specific right now. Any? Yeah, our situation, I asked this question a while back in mm -hmm. Slack, um, where we have a form, after the first step we go to the search, and if they don't find something, they have to continue the form with um, starting in step two of a multi-step mm -hmm. form. Yeah. And I couldn't figure out how to get it to start at step two of a multi-step form. Um, I made two forms, but it's hard to update yeah. to keep them in sync. <laughs> so there's, a, there's um, a recipe section on the documentation where people do, oh, well, there's a cookbook section with recipes. I've got to get that right. Um, and there's a recipe for writing a little custom code to jump people to certain pages. Yeah, I was able to jump inside the most step form, so let's say step two yeah. to step four or something like that. But I can't get it to start at step two. Uh, no, there, and there's examples of that. I, you know, you'd have to post it and see what's going on. I know people who are doing it, and I'll give a very good I, reason I why. Found some code, I yeah. tried it, it didn't work. We'd have to work on it and get more people involved. I, it's not supported out of the box because there's a risk of data loss. So I'm not going. To, uh, that's why certain features I just won't do because it's like 
if you jump to page two and then you're missing page one and there's required fields, you're going to have this whole yeah, issue yeah. scenarios that get scary. Um, but people have addressed it, and I think you could reopen the recipe. The recipes have comments on it, so sometimes people will step in and do it. And you could always, yeah. I got it working with two forms, but I want to find What's the state of the migration from Drupal 7 for content and forms or submission forms? I, no one paid me to do any work on it, so I haven't done, I haven't touched it at all. I'm, I'm being a little circuit. I just, I don't have a migration project, so I haven't touched it. People have written web form migrate mod. There's a web form migrate module and have done it successfully. Um, personally, what I kind of realized was, one, you should rewrite your forms because you should reevaluate them and think about it. And there is a really powerful submission import side to the web form module. And someone did it for this specific use case. For I appreciate this. He paid for it, and the reason was he's like, yeah, I'm in Drupal 7. I got to rework it. You're mer you know, I'm merging forms. You can merge forms into one. And this tool takes a simple spreadsheet and just brings the data in. And if you have UUIDs in the spreadsheet, it will merge perfectly. It'll keep track of it. Um, that, so that's the scenario I kind of recommend for people. Um, it's a tricky one. And no one's really stepped up to kind of be like, I've done this and this is the exact pattern. Um, it's important, I'll just step back. This is a completely new code base. So it's very different from what's in Drupal 7. And that's the, one of the challenges is you have to remap all your elements and data. Um, there's some pa patterns can be similar, but it's, it's a challenge. Right. Oh, we're done. Um, we're done on time. We're doing 15 minutes between sessions, mm -hmm. yeah. so I'm fine being late to the next session. So I'll just stay up here and answer any questions if you want to come up. Thanks again. Just come up. Next time. Thanks for dealing with the spill. I think like yeah. shouldn't have water up here. I don't know. What, I, you know. Oh, was that that? No, it's water. my no, it's my water because I get like clammy and then I can't. No, I mean most speakers need water. Yeah. Uh, all right, now we're done.